name is, the full name is Brandon Christos, and it's, uh, the last name is T-H-E-I-S. Um, I started out as, uh, out of high school as a plastics engineer. Uh, worked in plastics for uh, a long time. Switched over to um, IT and uh, stayed in IT for about 18 years. And then at the end of that, I just kind of got burnt out and um, took a five year sabbatical and then decided I wanted to be a farmer when I grew up. Tech really drove me away from it because I was inside so often. Um, but we never miss a chance to go camping. We're always out there. Um, I take the kids camping every year. We go on top of the Naked Mountain um, and stay up there, especially during July. There's a, it's 4,400 feet change up there, so we get a really good 20 degree temperature drop. And in July, boy, that feels good. That feels great. Um, there's really no challenges, I, mostly the job. Um, tech jobs, they just keep you inside. Uh, I mean, I spent 18 years at a desk. Um, I get to look out a window, and that's it. Um, so I stuck with watching weather, plus uh, radars and different things. Um, and then every chance we got, we'd go camping. But I was working 18 hour days, uh, most every day. Um, and by the time I got home, I had no energy left to do, to go <laughs> anywhere. I just wanted to lay down and go to sleep. And it finally, I guess, got to me enough, which is why I said, okay, yeah, we're going back to this. Um, I had never had farming in my radar. I just never thought about it. It was never a thing for me. Gardening, sure. Um, but then it's like, okay, fine. Let's just go away from the tech altogether. I want, I don't want in, the, I don't want in a building. I want to be outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a very, very positive change. Very mm -hmm. positive change. I get to hear birds again early in the morning. Uh, I get if I get up early enough, I, all the deer come by. I run them off, but <laughs> I like to see them come by. So to start this place, I had I did quite a bit of research trying to find this model and what would actually work on this land base. Now this land base is horrible. It's a technical nightmare to do. So I started working with conservation agencies, and uh, we're starting to get funds and stuff flowing in here to fix things that are really cost prohibitive for me. Um, because it involves the state, involves the federal government, and local local authorities to get in here and actually fix the line. And that's getting ready to happen next year. Um, just to kind of improve the, the land quality itself. I knew I wanted to do organic. It's just, it was just going to be good for it. Uh, we need to bring before it was here, I put most of these trees in. Um, there was nothing holding the bank. The people that were here before kept mowing the bank, and the creek would wander and it just washed all the soil out and it left nothing but rocks. They tried to put telephone poles and concrete, and rebar, and all this stuff in. It didn't work. So I took all this stuff out. We put, uh, we went back with what's supposed to be here willow trees, red buds. Um, some uh, oaks, and then we've got, uh, let's see what else, maples, and different things to kind of hold the willows along the creek, let the grass grow up along it to hold everything in place. It's the way nature wants to do it, so work with it, not against it. I grew up uh, not far from here, a town called Irwin, um, and that's where I really learned about land. My father was a, a, an old school conservationist. And his saying was, you go in the mountains, you don't leave a trace, at the very minimum. No one should know you were up there, no one should, you should never be able to tell you were there. And all that because he was a big hunter. Back then, that's what everybody did. When you hunt, animals can smell less than four miles away. It's the same way as we smell a skunk. We can tell when one's went off from a mile away. Animals, that's the way they smell us. So, all their teachings was of, you don't leave trash, you don't, you you don't mess with anything. You don't cut trees down. You don't do anything. If you need to build a fire, you use what fluid is already laying around. It's already dead. Don't mess with any of this. These mountains were a backyard. And um, we grew up in them. We played in them. Uh, we worked in them. A lot of us logged a bit. Uh, helping local loggers and foresters and stuff. Uh, a lot of my brothers worked for Forest Service for a while. After, after high school, they went out and worked for Forest Service, clearing trails and paths and different things. Um, it's always been a part of us. We, we grew up in these mountains, so 
it's just always been there. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have a special reverence for it. When mm -hmm. we were growing up, there was a bunch of us in our little neighborhood. And we were probably 15, 16, 17. All of us young boys bored, nothing to do. So we would always go back up to our house. And that's where we did. We camped all the time. And one day, I got this bright idea. We were all up there and I was sitting around talking. And we have a laurel tree. And what a laurel tree is, a, it's a wild rhododendron. And they get big, they get really big. But they create a canopy of about 20 feet tall. And I didn't weigh 100 pounds soaking wet. So I started climbing up. We always climb trees. So I climbed up on top of it, started bouncing around. I thought, hey, let's try this. There was a, a birch tree that come up above it. So I shimmied up the birch tree about 20 feet, jumped out of it, and landed on the top of the canopy. And that was great fun. Um, so all of us started doing it. So we came up with this little sport that we call laurel climbing. We go climb up in the tops of them. And we jump from tree to tree to tree to tree for miles. We would go for miles. And if you hit the ground, you're out. You had to go. That's, yeah, we used to do that all the time up there with them. Um, grapevines, there's wild grapevines up through there. A lot of us got hurt on them. <laughs> uh, but they were fun. We would have 100 foot drop offs. We'd swing out over them uh, on the grapevines. I've been gardening since I was eight years old. My great aunt is the one that taught me how to do organic to begin with. Um, she was considered a health nut. There was no such word as organic back then. And she wouldn't eat anything that had any kind of spray or anything on it. And uh, she showed me how to grow this stuff like that. And it tasted better. It tasted so much better. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Um, these varieties like of tomatoes and potatoes and stuff that they're doing now, they bear no resemblance to what a real one is. They bear no resemblance. Uh, these tomatoes you get in the store are cardboard dressed up as a tomato. They just taste awful. I did 160 varieties of tomatoes this year. I had them from all over the world, from every continent except Antarctica and Greenland. Wow, was that good. Yeah. Was that so good. I had all kinds of people jump on the CSA just for tomatoes. That's all they wanted, just for tomatoes. We started seeing temperature fluctuations back uh, it used to be um, when I was in grade school they would shut school down in Irwin and probably right around in through here as well starting in December and it would not open back up until mid-February because the roads were wiped out there and it would keep snowing and snowing and snowing every week we'd have six inches of snow that stopped by the time I was 13 and it has not snowed since then like that ever. We've had two big snowstorms, 93 and 96. Um, and since then, we've not had anything. If you ask anyone my age, anyone here that's been here, does it snow like it used to? The answer is no. It has gone away. It is a three inch snow around here, people panic. It used to be three inches, no one would even pay attention to it. Um, it wouldn't even matter. We've seen the effects of climate change. I don't need to watch it anywhere. I've seen it all my life. I've watched it go down over the last 40 years, which is where the really the largest amount of empirical data lays, is within that 40 year period, is what I've been watching. I've always been an avid weather enthusiast. I watch it all the time. It was one of my first jobs I ever wanted to do with being a meteorologist. The trees are, for instance, this year, I'll give you an example. Our ginkgo tree over here, it will hold its leaves until the first frost and it drops them all at once. This year it started over a month ago barely dropping leaves and then it slowly dropped them all down and after the first frost it still held them. And it's not just with that, that was just a weird a weird side effect we've had. All the trees are changing when they drop their leaves. They're not on time, they're always a little off. Um, so yeah, I've kind of always followed it um, because it ties in so much to uh, everything else. I mean, it's, it's, it's just tied into everything. Um, and then when you walk out your front door and see it because you grew up here, you've watched this all your life and you're thinking, okay, all these people that don't believe it, yeah, they haven't seen what I've seen. They don't remember and they don't care. So, uh, when I was younger, we had a lot more 
species variety. We'll just call it that. Um, there are plenty of deer, plenty of turkey, um, a lot of fox. Uh, we went up high out here. Uh, we definitely did not have the insect volume we have now. That is really exploded. I'd say over the, since, over the last seven years, I would say it has really exploded.